Romeo. I work for NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory Mission, the NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory Mission, SDO. Who knows what SDO is? Wow. <laughs> 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 SDO? SDO was launched in February 2010 into a geosync orbit, which means SDO is always roughly over New Mexico, sending down data and what SDO does is it looks at the sun in a way that we've never looked at the sun before. We're taking these high resolution images in a variety of wavelengths of the sun and they are sent down, they go straight into our data processing center, which is at Stanford University. And within minutes, we have live images of the sun available. But why do we want to look at the sun? I mean, it's up there, and at night it's not, right? What else? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, what, what happens on the sun has a direct impact on life on Earth. Believe it or not, um, our technology is affected by what's happening on the sun. The sun goes through a, an 11 year cycle, and when it reaches the maximum cycle, which is about two years away, it can create some <coughs> real issues for us. Meaning, a solar storm can interfere with our telecommunication and GPS. Um, it can be harmful to astronauts in space, so they have to be protected. It can take out entire power grids, and not just for a couple hours. It could take out a power grid in North America for months. That could have an, a huge impact, not only on our life, meaning you know we wouldn't have TV for a few weeks, a month, but economically it could have a major impact. Uh, estimates are anywhere between 10 to 50 billion dollars in impact. So we need to really figure out what's happening on the sun and we have to bring space weather awareness to the people. And that's where Camilla comes into the picture. Um, even though she's just a rubber chicken, she is the one spreading the message of not only SDO, but the sun, space weather, and now even more uh, how to get people excited into science and engineering. And, and get people to interact with each other. And today's topic is NASA social media and how can you be part of it too? Because what, what we discussed at uh, Space Up Houston in February was how can we make the social media part of NASA even more social? Um, I made a very bold sta statement in, two, in, in Houston saying NASA does a great job on social media but only on the media department side. Because they take the awesome stuff from the NASA website and they post it on, on social media, but they're lagging the social part. And the social part is the, the important part. That's where we can grab people's attention, and that's where we can make that's where we can make uh, you feel part of it. But how can we do that? I mean, we can't just have Joe. Camilla's already tired. <laughs> we can't just have Joe Smo uh, log on and do the Facebook updates for the main NASA account. That's not going to happen. But there are many ways that you can be part of it, and uh, I want to talk to you about it and get your feedback. Um, also, I want to talk about space points. Who has heard of, of space points? All right, good, good. So, in order to make something more create or more interactive and more fun, one of the ingredients we thought was to make it interactive, to make it like a game to give you something to work towards. And also at, at Space Up Houston in February, we introduced the idea of space points. And we have uh, Cindy with us um, somehow online in Texas. She couldn't be here. And she is on Twitter. And she's going to answer questions real lifetime because she knows all of it. I just inherited that space point segment. But what we want to do is we want to give people the opportunity to go out and collect points. So let's say you take your friends out on the field and you look the ISS pass. You could get, you could earn yourself five points for that. Um, you look through a solar telescope and get somebody else excited, you get 10 points for that. Well, great, what am I gonna do with these points? Well, you could really get some really good prizes out of this. So for right now, we might just build a launch pad with a rocket and if you have 100 points, you launch your rocket. But the future could be that if you have 5,000 points, you might be getting a special invitation to SpaceX. 
or you might be with 10,000 points, you might be flying zero G, who knows? So what we want to do is we want to give people incentives to be active and interactive and go out and spread the word of science and engineering and space exploration. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. But before we start, first of all, who is using social media in here? Let me ask this. Who is not using social media? <laughs> 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 Can we wait another minute? Wireless <laughs> 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 Okay. Um, I'm Jessica Lee. I'm a researcher in Stanford. Um, I'm Jessica Lee. I'm a researcher in Stanford. 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 I'm Jessica Lee. Who has been at a, to a NASA tweet-up? Wow. Hmm. Who knows about NASA tweet-ups? Who has been rejected for a NASA tweet-up? Oh. Oh. Well, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That's, that's not a problem because we have so many more in the pipeline. Just next month will be the next one. Just yesterday and the, the, the Juno uh, tweet-up ended. So there's more, more to come. So, now, in your opinion, how can we make, how can NASA make social media more engaging and more interactive? Any ideas? Slumber parties. All right, let's say slumber parties. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is. What else? Well, so probably, you know, things like what uh, what I did running up to uh, STS-135, right? I mean, actually go and, go and uh, you know, get, a, get the authority to take the chicken and go somewhere and do something with it. Ooh, chicken authority. So, <laughs> one thing that we, that we also suggested, or that we got suggestions for at Houston was, well, Camilla might be a perfect outlet. Maybe we can find people that want to host Camilla for a few days or a week, and they become responsible for the content. And the content has to be related to either NASA or science or engineering or STEM in, in general. So in July, we did a test, and, and um, Jeff and Heather took Camilla on a cross-country trip from San Diego to Florida to the 135 launch. And along the way, they stopped at the most incredible places that not necessarily had anything to do with NASA, like Roswell, for example. Oh, um, yeah. But it got people excited. It got people interested. The, the, the picture of Camilla, you know, kind of face to face with the alien, was the most <laughs> repeated picture. <laughs> and it ended up as a new a, a new segment in Houston about this journey of, of Heather, Jeff, and, and Camilla. So that might be one way, finding people that want to be involved. It doesn't have to be Camilla. There is now a whole bunch of other mission mascots out there um, that are trying now to gain your interest as well. Hmm. So any other suggestions? YouTube videos that aren't boring. <laughs> yes. uh, for instance, you take something awesome like a, for my, one of my favorite videos is the NSL landing animation. But then it's surrounded by people who are just sitting there talking at the screen. Well, it's like NASA TV. That's NASA boring. TV, I think, is boring a lot. Yes, it is. And so, but you see people who do fan videos of NASA stuff, and they put it with like a rock song in the background or something. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Or even brothers. the video that we saw earlier today, that was fantastic. If NASA did stuff that wasn't so, you know, locked down to here are the bare facts, and we're not going to give you any emotion behind them. So you're talking about like an advertising team? Yeah. <laughs> Marketing team. That's not allowed. Right. <laughs> so why don't you make your own video? Your own um, NASA video. I have, but NASA has a much wider distribution, and it would help if these things came from NASA and not just fans, I think. Well, why couldn't Camilla s start submitting stuff like that? She should. And I do think there's some effective, like the Vlogbrothers. I don't know if you yeah, saw that. Yeah, oh, no, I love that. I've, I've watched so the video fantastic. several times. I've warned people. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 And in the whole, that whole video about decreasing the suck and increasing the awesome, yeah, it yes. makes it yes. so much better yes. for a lot of people I know. Yeah, in four minutes. It's genius. Yeah. Yeah. That, what you need to do is you need to create. Uh, Stories that are viral, things that like, mm -hmm. like you said, that, that one thing with the with, that went viral because of the, the, the character and the, and the alien, right? 
Um, but like you, you started off this whole thing with this story about, about solar weather and solar storms and the effect they can have on Earth. You want to pick a historical time that happened where this actually happened and create some kind of a, 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 an urgent, like a narrative, something that people can kind of hook into. Um, because that's, people otherwise, it's too abstract. The general public doesn't get into this because they keep going, well, this doesn't affect me. This is always the argument. It's like, why space at all? So mm -hmm. it, to most people, it doesn't affect it. It just seems like a lot of us who are interested in it. We need to find something that hooks in in a visceral way. Making it real, that's a big, that's making it so that people can relate to it. Uh, in, in the mid-1800s, we had a huge solar event that caused, exactly, <laughs> that caused auroras all the way down to Cuba. Wow. Um, I mean, it was visible, but technology back then, I mean, they didn't have cell phones, they had telegraph. <laughs> it was an event in 1998 as well. Exactly, and, and you know what caused what happened there? Power outage. Yeah. Um, but again, that one was uh, I think um, I, I didn't hear, I didn't see it so much from the power outage. You guys worked in the telecommunications industry at the time. Uh, we had problems with a couple of satellites, and we couldn't get pages. Because I mean, pages were the primary remote communication device, and, and we had a lot of a lot of uh, customers who couldn't get pages. But I, I really believe the problem today is that we have such short-term memories. I mean, that was, what, a couple of decades ago. Um, who remembers that? It really has to happen again for people to wake up and say, oh my god, this is real. Let's make some more solar flares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, I, I got an alert yesterday from 3D Sun saying that you might be able to see auroras at all latitudes. Well, yesterday night. So all I the way down to Pennsylvania. Backyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does anyone know about the uh, potential of uh, the slipping again? Mm -hmm. Within the next hundred years, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, on the flip side of no more boring stuff, there, I think it's an unofficial Twitter feed, not from NASA, but it's Vo the Voyager 1 probe from a first person perspective mm -hmm. that says, like, I am pointing my uh, sun yeah. surface. Uh, uh, sensor here, and it'd be nice like if every active space probe had like a first person Twitter account. A thing. lot of them they do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Curiosity has one, yeah. uh, Phoenix had one that was hugely popular when Twitter mm -hmm. was first getting going. Uh, it's but a big opportunity. Even some of the old ones, like the pioneers that are still out there, like don't yeah. do much, still should have ones like that. <laughs> so, you know, pioneers might be a little more difficult because I understand they finally uh, actually took out the uh, computer systems. Oh, do they? The, the communication. Ah, okay. Oh, the Voyagers still tweet, uh, both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Voyager Voyager still, still tweet. tweet. Yeah, those, those but along those same lines, more freedom for technicians and engineers to just tweet what they're doing on their job. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we have a, a number of friends who have gotten in trouble for tweeting some of the stuff they do on the job. And it's like, wait a minute, that's right. cool stuff. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, working here at the Space Center, I actually have my own Twitter account set up for the Space Center. We get a lot of freedom to talk about what we want, what we're doing at the Space Center. And it really helps pull people in and engage them about what we're doing here at the Columbia Memorial Space Center. Yeah. Or, even what just, or even just if they go like Google in the Space Center, mm -hmm. they're going to see your tweets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they're going to be there. Mm -hmm. But going back to your point, I mean, it's true. People get in trouble. I work for JPL. I work on MSL. And every time we were going to tweet about something cool that we were doing, here we get this page of this all of this stuff that we could not tweet. And it narrowed down to Mars looks red. <laughs> well, especially when you do the during the, the development phase of a mission, there's a lot of stuff that you can tweet. Or there are awesome pictures you can send out because of ITAR, which is the International Traffic Arms Regulation, which pretty much means every spacecraft could be potentially a weapon because you can remote control it and you could crash it. Somewhere. But you have a viewing gallery everywhere you go and see a spacecraft. You have the viewing gallery. There's people with huge zooming, you know, lenses that could take all those pictures. But somehow, we who work in there cannot do that. So it's kind of strange. So you know. how can we change that? Big side talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was in the impossible time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was last time. Uh, oh, that's what we forgot. Fix ITAR, fix the budget. <laughs> 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 well, while we're talking about this, though, there's a great middle um, that doesn't exist. I am. Um, I'm the person who put together the JPL Mars rover Matt Mattel deal years ago, which blew up and it just, I ended up leaving and forming my own company and doing that. And that's a little story for over a drink somewhere. But anyway, or, or whenever my session is, I think it's four. Um, but there's a middle here that I've been trying to make work and isn't, which is 
Right now, I work at a university that has um, the single largest pair of teachers in California. My job is to make science interesting to them, somehow. And what I've been doing is approaching all kinds of science organizations and saying, I want my teachers, who are mostly online, we teach mostly online, I want my online students to be able to work on your data somehow. No, 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 can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, you know. You want some coloring books? <laughs> you know, so there's, you know, I have students who are afraid of math and they're afraid of science, mostly. And generalizing, but most of them are. But if I can actually get them involved in a little bit of problem solving or feeling like they're actually working on something, and SETI at home is too passive, um, but, you know, there's a Galaxy Zoo, you're probably aware of, you know, that's too easy. I can't work that into a class. They can do it for 20 minutes and it'll be great and that's all good. But I've been trying to find people to collaborate with who have significant data sets that I can actually build into my curriculum. And that makes everybody's hair stand up. <laughs> so there's a great middle there. And there's a lot of science data that's going unanalyzed because there's no bodies to do it. It's not that hard, a lot of it. So, you know, a more uh, sort of a more intelligent middle that goes beyond, I mean, this is great for involving people, right, at the first step, but where do they go from there? There's nothing else after that. That's a very good point. Who doesn't want to get hands-on on, on real-life data and work with it? And there are some missions, SDO is one, where you can get <coughs> SDO data right off the press, so to speak, and do space weather predictions on your own. And we're going to make this better and better so people can really use the data and work with it and have fun with it. So Camilla has a space weather project. What about the USGS? Yeah, so just the trick is what we really want to do is find scientists who are asking a question and then work with them because then I'll give them the sense that, you know, they see science as worksheets and canned answers. They see it as things to memorize. And what I'm trying to do is show them the process and exploration and moving forward and that it's fun and that you go down blind alleys and all the things that we know all about that are in this room, right? Well, if you're trying to make it more fun, don't you need, like, interactive media and stuff? Well, you need you, why not think about talking yeah. to, um... You know what? Like, I don't want the answer there, see? See? For, for, a lot, for a lot of, a lot of I, I think where she's going is, is for a lot of, a lot of people who have a certain level of intelligence and education, actually having them do problem solving and, and recognize that, hey, science is actually a lot of problem solving and there's actually more to it than what they've been through and what they've experienced yeah. so far. I understand. As soon as they get into that, and, and, it, it, and it can't be just something that, that's, you know, you do for 20 minutes and, and all of a sudden it's boring. No, no, that's, hey, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying um, you need to build different platforms of education because clearly the forms of education that are present are not providing the proper momentum to get us anywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, most, a, lot of like, like, a lot of those people develop their own software. They have limited money and they develop it for their grad students and themselves, and that, that's what they do, right? Well, and, right. There isn't, I mean, there isn't really a funding source right now other than, you know, me doing what I can late at night, you know, right. as a faculty member. There isn't much to, that crosses that boundary. But that's always you know, the start of innovation, right? It's yeah. like a whole bunch of private people doing their independent things and then eventually they come together and then some kind of larger thing is born, right? I mean, right, right now. It, at this point, right, at this point we're talking about, we're talking about like the future education of the public, right, in a lot of ways. And I think that that's like totally failed in the, in the sense of like space and stuff. I mean, stuff NASA stuff is great, but like how, how much of that is in actual classrooms? Like, or, or has, uh, has something that kids can actually interact with? But you know, you know, I, I there's took like a, we have you we have utilities now, <laughs> like uh, like Adobe Premiere and stuff. There's a there's um a great company called uh, Red Red Planet I think that makes like light packs for Adobe Premiere that makes it really easy to uh, to render things. Like I I guess my point is that rendering and and um, and three dimensional uh, stuff is getting a lot easier to do. Like kids can do it now, like really well. And uh, I think that that's a, a large untapped thing. Like you've got you've got all these uh, online art, artist networks, but none of them are really coagulated in any kind of direction, right? And I think it's kind of like on us to. It is on us. To, it is all on us and on you too. So I don't. We're almost done with this session, but two things I want to accomplish. When you leave here, you're not done. I mm -hmm. have given my speech. Now I want to see you guys do something to enhance the outreach that we can that we can have. 
Hey, maybe add one more thing to the board. It might be ahead of the curve, but um, Google Plus has this feature called Hangouts for sort of, like group video chats. And like, if some of the missions could have like Hangouts on you know, maybe once a month or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, because like the This Week at NASA is great on YouTube, but it's not interactive. I mean, you can you can add comments, but um, you know, if you could actually ask yeah. questions during like a Hangout. Like, yeah, like I. If you had like the Mars rover drivers on a Google uh, Hangout, that'd be great. You know, like Scott mm -hmm. Maxwell. Yeah, I did a, I did a yeah. Google Hangout with all my friends during the 135 reentry and answered their questions as best as I could about that. So, right. And it was really cool because I could engage with them instantly and tell them what was happening instantly with the shuttle, so, which was nice. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most important things that we can do is to go into the local schools hmm. once a month, go in, make a phone call, go in and talk to some students. I've volunteered at various schools at various levels of the children's development. Hmm. And the most important time to reach a child, I went in and I volunteered for three months once a week for second graders. And at the end of that time, those kids looked up at me with the biggest eyes and said, oh my god, I didn't know science was cool. Mm -hmm. We covered math, we covered science, we did physics and all of these things. Each of you are personally responsible for reaching out into your communities. The science teachers, sometimes they don't, they don't have the resources, they can't do it. If you're a parent, go in and volunteer in your kid's school. If you're a s former student, go in and do it. If you're alive, go into a school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're public or private. Damn, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> and look up space pirates. Yeah. 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 And look up space points. Uh, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, space points. And get involved in that too. Uh, we're releasing more and more information. We're going to have an app where you can check in. Um, we're going to have accounts set up. So this is really starting to take off. So thank you all for joining. Um, on the way out, please take a SDO mission patch. Thank you. Good job.